are. Me and Rob are on the Great Lake Caddo, the only natural lake in Texas here. They actually might eat you. They might skin you and eat you. Welcome back to another Guggen Squad episode, y'all. We're starting off here at my house, the tree house, but me and Rob are about to go head to Caddo Lake in the swamps. But I wanted to start you guys off with something brand new for Mystery Tackle Box. Available now, you can sign up to get these quarterly ship just like your regular mystery tackle box but it's all Guggen in here this is the Guggen crate so we'll leave a link down below you can sign up to get these sent to your house every three months and it's completely Guggen stuff inside of here it's like a cube of Guggen goodness so link down below sign up to get it now let's go ahead to Caddo Lake we have arrived we are in the swamp so our house is actually on the water, which is kind of neat. Uh, you just get the vibes, the swamp vibes, Spanish moss. Um, it's going to be mosquitoes. These fish are probably mid to late spawn, I would oh, imagine. Oh, dude, it's warm out here. Yeah, it's warm. Yeah. So let's go check out the crib. Mm -hmm. This makes me want to eat some boudin. Go to Mardi Gras. This is good times right here. So. This lake is full of cypress trees, and I think that's what me and Rob are going to be fishing a lot of, is going around to uh, trees like this, and you can even see where that, that water is kind of moving past it. So they'll sit in the, the current, sit out of the current in these cypress trees, and just wait for a nice juicy jig to swim by. Smack, so this looks awesome. I'm excited. I haven't fished uh, this lake in a couple of years. And I haven't done really like dedicated shallow fishing in a, in a long time because this is no live scoping, no a rigging, no deep cranking. I mean, this is just down and dirty up in uh, up in the shallow. So I know Rob likes that kind of fishing too. So should be a good time. And the house is killer in the swamps, man. It's beautiful. Camera. Hello. How are you doing? Are we early? Are we a little early for a check-in? Are we in the wrong house? Oh. Okay, no worries. She didn't have a shirt on. Her shirt's in the dryer. <laughs> yeah, she said her shirt was in the dryer. I immediately veered my eyes away. I did not try to find her. Pop out. I was like, let me see them. <laughs> I want to see what they look like. <laughs> I'm pulling out of the tackle to massive amounts of plastics. We're gonna do a little nuking, I think. A lot of flipping. So I got a lot of nuke punches. I've got various crawl trailers. I've got some of the blazing worms for swimming over the grass. Um, frogs, I grabbed some frogs. Some zingers, um, just things like that. There's not gonna be a whole lot of options fishing heavy grass and up shallow so i love that i love that it reduces things makes things more simple focus in on the meat and potatoes stain water so we're going darker colors your okeechobee craws um, your black and blues things like that um, that's typically what you do in dirtier water so i like when things are simpler and we can just focus in and just start working just start just putting it on the target going to be a lot of target casting this trip. Down and dirty. Well, folks, this is pretty unique right here. We're actually at Johnson's Ranch. This was established in 1908. It's the oldest inland marina in Texas. So uh, back in the early 1900s, in the fur trade, they used to run paddle boats and stuff up through from the ocean all the way up and through here and then continue on up in the river. So a lot of history right here and uh, it ain't much, but gotta go. This is over 100 years old. It's not every day you see a 100 year old marine. Back in the 
today? Shoot, I don't know. The stars and the moon. I I don't know. It had to have been extremely difficult with all the trees. And there, there was parts where we were just running over three feet of water for a mile. So, can you imagine being stuck out here in a paddle boat? Two on a frog, uh, one on a nuke punch. I don't know. I don't know where these fish are going to be. The water is uh, high 60s. The problem is just figuring out like where in the jungle are they? Do you want to fish cypress trees or do you want to fish cypress trees or do you want to fish cypress trees and grass? Rackley's having some Rackley issues. Trolling motor won't go up. So it's had to shove a uh, do the old Florida thing and show you. Yeah. That's a new tip for me, dude. I, I mean, you might want to tell the folks at home about Folks that. at home? I sometimes use water bottles too, but you could shove your life vest or a water bottle in there and it'll raise that thing up. That's like when you're getting them deep in the shallows. Deep in the shallows. That's like a pun almost, ain't it? No. Uh, oxymoron. What's it? Oxymoron, thank you. Swim jig in the dollar pads. God, I just saw a flash and I was like, what is that? Is that a pickerel? No, it's a largemouth. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. First one of the trip and it's a beauty. That is a Caddo Lake largemouth right there, folks. Hate that grass hero. A little crack and crawl on it. Rob was just saying, this stretch looks looks good right here. As soon as he said that, I got a bite. That tail looks kind of used. Oh, yeah. Post-spawn. That's cool. That's a great fish. You know, that's over three pounds. It's a nice one to start with. Beautiful. That, that fish wanted it hard. Love it when you do that. Mm. You smell very grassy. Mmm. Yeah, that fish was uh, was out, out in front, and uh, there's just a series of grass and little little dollar pads. I call them dollar pads, isn't that what they call them? Half dollar pads or something? They're like little half dollar size, and um, just throwing a swim jig, a little white crack crawl on the back. Fish sucked it in, so I feel like that. What you got on there is probably going to be a little deal too. I know, but this the depth front half seemed kind of choked. It makes me wonder if they were all just kind of out front of that stuff. I know. It's so weird. Like this type of fishing, you're just reading little micro uh, environments. Like it, it's changed every 30 yards going down this bank from thick out in front to more open by the trees to you know, there's this kind of grass and this kind of grass. So it's just reading the bank and switching up as you go. It's kind of fun, challenging, but it's fun. No way. <laughs> That's hilarious. Doink. And then doink. Good fish. Uh, moving bait might be the ticket. I know. It's another just nice, tasty, healthy fish. Let's take a look at the tail. It's a good looking fish. That's probably posty, but it looks pretty clean. Looks like it's never been caught. It's one of those lakes that's so big, so vast, you can catch fish. I've just never seen a lure. Although it seems like today they've seen a lot of lures. <laughs> but uh, that's a nice, solid fish right there. That's cool. Caught it on the swim jig again. Me and Robert just flipping down a stretch and. Uh, I was like, man, this kind of looks good for uh, for a moving bait. I picked it up. And there it is. Good fish. Few and far in between, though. I'm waiting to get that 
that flip and bite thump. Yeah. But right now it seems like a moving bait. And I, I couldn't even tell you like where, what the program is, where they want to be. That was kind of up there near the cypress, but not quite up on a stump. Um, those those areas that I cut, that area I cut the last one was completely different, so I don't really know. It's just going down the bank right now and throwing out whatever looks good, picking up what you feel. Right now with this overcast and wind, I think a moving bait just feels right. Black and blue, pretty standard color for fishing water like this. So if you don't have any black and blue swim jigs, vibrating jigs, flipping jigs, I'd recommend getting some for stained. Folks, folks, no, we're not in northern Michigan. We are in the East Texas uh, cypress trees. And that is a chain pickerel. It's like a small pike. It's crazy. Look at the teeth on this thing. Look at the teeth. Like that'll that'll cut your line. That'll jack you up if you're not careful. So it's kind of kind of an interesting fish to be out here. There's not a whole lot of lakes that fish that actually have these in there. I think it's Florida and just mostly natural lakes. Pretty though. A little jewel of Lake Caddo. And I'm still throwing a frog. Oh, I'm still getting that frog. <laughs> I'm still looking. Getting greasy with that frog in there. I'm just kind of throwing a moving bait. Just, I, I don't understand, like, where do the fish really want to be? Like, this looks phenomenal, but it, a lot of it looks phenomenal. Apparently, I'm just going to put on a swim jig tomorrow and just get after it. Well, swimming is good. I think, I think the... Blazing worms, probably a good program. We're out in the middle of nowhere. We could just make one quick send and drive in, pick it up real quick. Quick send to where? I don't know. We can. We got to figure that out. We can figure that out. I don't know. We're in quick. the national forest. We, I mean, we may have to quick send it in. I mean, we have, we can't die out here with no food. All right, we have. Uh, We've come out here for. Oh, this wasn't even recording. This is like five hours of fishing. I said, um, Matt, I, was, I wasn't recording, so you didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, you didn't miss much. <laughs> we had, I don't, Dude, I'm going to say four or five. They wouldn't need it. Bites on a moving bait that just didn't connect. Frog bites, uh, blazing worm. The only thing they connected with was a swim jig. If they can hear you right now, I'd be super shocked. <laughs> You think so? I, I think it's the furry <laughs> thing on there. I can't give me that, okay? I know. We got it. Let's go find what we're going to eat. But we got, we're out here in the middle of the woods. We got a cabin. We just talked to John. John's coming over. We want to kind of compare notes about the day and uh, get ready for tomorrow. You know, there's a lot to explore. We're having some wind, wind, wind things in Texas. The storm's coming. Squad now has a full lineup of terminal tackle. This new terminal tackle lineup will have you covered in any situation. The new Guggen terminal tackle comes with labeled weights, unique colors, and hooks designed specifically for each bait. You can go to GuggenSquad.com and pick up the brand new line of terminal tackle while supplies last.